Wow. What a lovely day for Bitch and Brew. There we go, I'm ready. Oh, forgot my brew. There we go. <clears throat> Breakfast, kitchen brew. Breakfast! You won. I'm joking. It's just gonna be kitchen brew. Anyway, yeah. Um, it ain't clickbait or anything like that. In fact, let me just finish my toast. Yeah, so this ain't clickbait or anything like that. Basically, yeah, I was robbed. And my actual mate was robbed as well. And I'll tell you the full story on what happened and then show you why I'm annoyed and why this has made its way onto kitchen brew. So anyway, um, I was in work on a Saturday and we all decided to go out after work, go town and have a few drinks, you know, the usual. So me, my friend Sean and my friend Betty, that also works with us, both of them, uh, decided to go out and we were out having a good time, you know, drinking that. And then at the end of the night, uh, about four o'clock it was, we had a late and uh, we were going home. So we were calling the taxi and stuff and then, uh, you know, just like walking to a point where the taxi could find us. And out of nowhere, this girl comes up to me and starts grinding on me and I was like, what? Like, you know, so I push her away and she's going mad. She's like, oh, come on, come on. You know, like, and I'm like, no, like, you know, pushed her away. Then she goes on to my mate, but he's gay, basically. And what happened was is he pushed her away as well. And then, uh, anyway, after that, we thought nothing of it. And we thought, well, that was a bit weird, you know, someone coming out of the blue just to grind on us and stuff. So um, she, she starts walking off. Then he notices that he's got money missing out of his pocket. And he goes, I've lost 100 quid. And it hit me then, I was like, hang on a second, she was all over us a second ago. That's the culprit. So I start running off to, off to her, and she's heard him say he's lost 100 quid, and she knows that, like, you know, basically, she'd robbed him. So I chased after her, fuming at this point. I was like, you know, like, he's a nice guy, I don't want him to, like, get robbed. And the only way I could stop her, we were, like, having a chase and stuff was to push her down, and it was the only option, I'd had a few drinks as well, like, granted, you know, but the only option was to just, like, push her down to the floor to get the money. I couldn't really grab her, and I'd had a few drinks, I wasn't thinking on my feet, and I held my hands up to that one, but she shouldn't have robbed us in the end of the day. Anyway, when I'm going mad, I notice that my cards have gone missing as well, so I'm screaming at her on the floor, like, give us the cards back and stuff, like, and it was all, like, a massive scene, like, everything was kicking off, and then she gets up, I let her get up, you know what I mean, I'm not I'm not going to just have a go at someone on the floor, I'm going to let them get up and explain themselves and, you know, do the right thing, basically, even though I pushed her, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so uh, she gets up and then she starts calling this guy over. Anyway, this guy comes out of nowhere now, um, I think he was like a backup or something like that. And I was fuming at this point, I was like, right, I've given her a chance and she's gone and like, you know, tried to call back up, she's had this planned. So this guy comes out of nowhere and I end up like pushing him to the shutters and she's trying to get off and then he's trying to talk to her like after like she's at the shutters and I've turned to my mate to talk. It was just, it was hectic, it was mad. And basically um, like they start trying to get off. So I go back to him and then like keep him against the shutters again. I go mental like, you know, I was in a bit of a bad mood at that point. You know, we've had a good night and someone's tried to rob us. You know, we've worked hard for that money. As I'd known beforehand, I'd finished my shift. It was a brutal double Saturday shift and, you know, that was going through my head. And then, <clears throat> basically, uh, they keep trying to sneak off up the road and this guy's pretending, oh, he doesn't know what's going on. He's like, what are you doing? What's going on? Why have you got yourself into this situation? And then, basically, uh, I caught up to him again and I went mental at this point. I was like, stay here. Like that. My mate Sean's called the police. Like, I didn't notice this at the, at the time, but he'd already called him before. Then he calls him up again and I'm going mad. I'm fuming at this point. I did have a few drinks again, guys. I'm sorry for, like, waffling on, but... Uh, uh, he calls the police again, and he's like, oh, the situation's escalated and stuff like that. So the police come, like, literally, like, two minutes afterwards, after I'm, like, trying to keep these guys by the side of the shop, like, on the pavement. 
and then uh, they come out and then we explain what's happened I was still fuming at that point like I was like look she's robbed us you know like search and search everything I was just in a bad mood I was, I was and I was steaming drunk you know you can't blame me but anyway I caught out the thief so in the end of the day at least it's better than having my cards nicked and my mate losing 100 quid so uh, I tell the police to say look she's got my cards like go and search her and stuff and then um the police go over to her, they start speaking to her, searching her and that. They don't find the cards and they don't find the money. And I said, maybe she's thrown them, like she was trying to get off at a few points. And maybe she knows that she's been caught out and she's tried to throw them. So when we walk up the road, the police officer's got his torch out and like looking around for my cards. And then I found one of them on the floor. And I was like, and it was my diabetes card. I have diabetes. So it was a pretty important thing, you know what I mean? And for someone to steal that, it just, it angered me even more. And I knew that that card had gone, like, missing, but I didn't think, think too deeply about it until I found it on the floor and realised that's just disrespectful. So they find my cards, but they don't find my mate's money. And what they told us is, when she'd called this guy out, this backup or whatever she had, um, she's obviously passed them to him, but because he wasn't there at the time the money went missing, he cannot be searched. Like, so I found that a bit, like, ridiculous. So the police just put her in the van until, like, we'd gone away. They knew I was annoyed and they didn't want any, you know, like, dispute or anything like that. But a few months later, like, yeah, we talked about it and stuff. And then uh, she turns up on a viral video. My friend Betty had tagged me in this video, like, that's the girl that robbed us. And I didn't believe it. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? She looked like the type not to have a phone. And I don't want to sound, like, judgmental or anything like that. But it was true, you know what I mean? She... You know what I mean? She looked like she preferred drugs over her phone. Anyway, um, so I look at this video. In fact, I'll show you the video now. So I look at that video and then I find out, like, whoa, it is her. So I commented on this video saying everything that had happened, you know, explaining, telling people to look out for her because it was a pretty viral video that she was in. People are going to obviously see her in town and come up to her for selfies and stuff, not knowing that she's a light-fingered pickpocket. And, you know, with a selfie, you get in close range and stuff. She could easily go into, like, people's back pockets and everything else. So I thought, strike first, tell them, you know, like, explain what's happened. So I did, and then um, I got a lot, a lot of, like, negative feedback. I'm not bothered about it, you know what I mean? I don't mind banter and stuff, but... The fact that annoyed me the most was people were more bothered about the fact that I didn't put full stops into what I was saying rather than the fact that I was robbed and I was trying to help other people from not being robbed. You know what I mean? It was it just infuriated me. That's why it's going on and brew. Um basically, uh yeah, so I'd commented all that. People were getting back to me. In fact, I'll show you the comments now. Yeah, so all that happened, and I find it mad that people focus more on the point that I didn't put full stops than the point that I was trying to explain to them, which was, you know, I got robbed, don't go up to her for selfies. Like, well, I didn't really say that, but it just gives people in the back of the mind, you know, don't go up to her for selfies, don't trust her, you know what I mean? She's an untrustworthy person. So anyway, I did that, I got all that, and I was fuming about it. And a few people, granted, did stick up for me and they did say like, whoa, this guy was robbed by some hood rat, like, and he's trying to help you guys and all that you can be bothered about is the full stops at his in his sentences and stuff. And it just goes to show that, like, people on social media, when they're sat behind the screen, you know, the wall of lead or whatever you want to call it, the indestructible wall of social media, they think they're it. They think, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll take the out of this guy because um, he's done this, that and the other, like, wrong when, if it was in person, they'd probably listen to the story that I'd have to say. And that's what I'm going to go on about in the next episode. It's going to be called Not So Social Media. But anyway, that's the point I wanted to put across. Uh, give me your ideas and your thoughts in the comments. Was I right to do that? Because in, in the situation that it was, I honestly, my brain acted faster, and my body acted faster than my brain to do, to take it down, basically. I, I, you know what I mean? I couldn't help it. I couldn't have just let her run away with, like, my mate's money and stuff before I knew that my cards had gone missing as well. Especially my diabetes one, my ID, everything. And my bank card. So all my money could have been drained from that night and it was worth doing that, getting my cards back and sorting out. It's just a shame that my mate didn't end up getting his money back. 
uh, and it's actually a subscriber, I'm sorry Sean, I forgot he was a subscriber, <laughs> um, but yeah that's what I had to say, uh, if you liked it please actually like it, share, subscribe and you know do whatever, and um, I'll try and keep more of these up if you, if you enjoy them and stuff, uh, so this was Bitch and Broom, peace out guys, I wasn't so peaceful that night though, I'm sorry. This was Bitch and Brew, and that's what I have to say to you.